Hello, my name is Verma Cardenas, and today I will be going over why black men matter. Today's sources entail Moonlight, directed by Barry Jenkins, originally from a play called In the Moonlight, Black Boys of Blue, by Terrell Alvin McCraney. An article from occultamen.org called What I've Learned Since My Son Came Out by Ted Bunch, and the movie Love, Simon, directed by Greg Bertolanti, uh, originally a book called Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Alberta Ali, and The Six Strangest Things Nobody Tells You About Life in Korea by Jason Iannone from Cracked.com. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about hegemonic masculinity. It's a practice um, that makes a man's dominance legitimate um, in society and basically justifies how they act towards other people. If they're like mean or um, very stoic or straightforward towards other people, it's because that's the way of being a man, such said by society. But not only men use this, women use it too. They try to establish themselves in the workplace uh, by using hegemonic masculinity as a way to bring themselves into the light. But anyway, how does that relate to black men in America? Why black men matter? Well, black men use this as well. Hegemonic masculinity. It, it's in our society and that's what they see and use to establish their own dominance because to society sadly a black man is invisible they are in a sense trying to overcompensate now to try to remain visible and because of this we have many problems within the black community especially with black men so today's example will use hegemonic masculinity in the terms of the black family, especially with the son and father in the family. I know not a lot of families, black families, have the father in the picture, but this one will. And it will help me explain as to the toxicity of hegemonic masculinity in the black family household. So let's say that the father is in the family and the father is trying to protect and prepare his son for the type of society he's going to send him off to that he won't be able to protect him from. A society where a black man isn't really looked upon and is sometimes even looked down upon. And say that son is gay. And with the father trying his hardest to show his son the ropes of trying to be a legitimate strong male, um, and then his son comes out to him as gay. the parent, the father, would then not, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes, in this case, this time, that the example I'm giving you, the father does not accept his son and quickly disregards him as a son. Homophobia. This is what I want to talk about. Homophobia in the black male community. Now let's put this into perspective. The reason for such homophobia in the in black male communities, like relationship between a black male with a black male, is because of hegemonic masculinity. It's the it's their fear that if they are kind and caring 
almost too caring to each other, although I don't believe there's anything as such as too caring, that they may be marked by their whole group of black males as um, a punk or as gay or other worse terms than that because of their touch with their feelings, because of their touch with their emotions. It's because of hegemonic masculinity that is, that is produced by our American society that there's this need of being the best man there is without ever really taking consideration of how others may feel. And if it is taking consideration, it's to put them more down in order to be the best alpha male. Over the years, the representation of black males in the LGBT community in the public, so like in entertainment and stuff like that, has gradually been better, um, especially uh, great representation in the movie Moonlight and how the main character, if you don't know about Moonlight, the main character, Chiron, or at first called Little, he doesn't know he's gay, but he knows he feels different at first. Um, and the movie shows you his starting life with his mother being busy all the time and him being bullied by kids and his best friend trying to help him to be as normal as possible. And then finding a father figure that would then tell him that being okay being, sorry, being gay is okay. And then it cuts to him being a little bit older, uh, I think in high school, and how he's still trying to hide. He, he tries to hide who he is. While he was younger, he kind of more expressed himself, but now he's trying to hide who he is, but it's still himself. Um, his bullies do chastise him. Uh, and do believe he's gay, but he doesn't really answer them that he is gay. Um, so he gets beat up for it once or twice. I think it's twice. Or uh, actually once. And then once he goes to school again, his own best friend is pinned against him as a way, in a way where the best friend didn't expect it and neither did Chiron. And then it cuts to him being older and just being a whole shell of protection. He put this shell, uh, this wall of protection around him where he won't let anybody in. He kind of uses a fake side of himself and he feels the need he has to, that he has to show only this side of himself so that no one could catch him by surprise, so that no one could hurt him on purpose until he gets a call from his best friend and all that wall starts breaking down little by little as soon as he keeps talking to him and like talking to each other eventually he kind of goes a little bit he, he opens up a little bit back to what he used to be but you can tell that he won't be the same especially what happened to him in high school so Moonlight really reflects on the idea of gay men, gay black men uh, in a black community and how, how much a black man has to go through in order to prove that they are not what others say that they are that they try to avoid the whole fact that they wouldn't be even considered even a whisper of being gay, of being part of the LGBT community. Now compare Moonlight to the movie Love, Simon. In Love, Simon, obviously the main character is a predominantly Caucasian um, male who also hid himself from being gay uh, from his school 
in the end, obviously, it's a, it, in the movie is a journey of him talking to a guy uh, through emails and slowly falling in love with him and the school finding out that he's gay and can't control his coming out story. Uh, still wants to meet up with the man, the boy, that he had been emailing. They went to meet up and it happens to be a, a black man, a black boy from his school uh, who was also popular. But they work it differently in a sense that we don't see um, the other character grow up or his version of the story. It's just mainly a one story thing. Even though Moonlight is also a one story thing, it's not what Chiron is thinking all the time. In Love, Simon, you know what um, Simon is thinking all the time. In Moonlight, you don't know what anybody's thinking, so it's just situational. And Love, Simon, it's definitely a leaning type of story where it's like they lean it towards more of the main character. They don't really pay much attention to the other exterior characters. Um, so the love interest, uh, they on, the only things we know about him is that he had played on a sports team and that his that he was Jewish. That's it. We learn a little bit about the Jewish, um, about his Jewish side, but you don't know that he is who he is until the very end. Not a good representation, I don't believe, although it's a good movie and it has a really good, like, backstory. It doesn't have the same representation of a black male, uh, especially a black male that's gay, and him coming out as well to his family. Um, it seemed much more accepting in that movie rather than in this one. Maybe it could be that it could have been that the parents were more accepting, um, even though I believe the movie takes place in Alabama. Um, I just don't see it as realistic as it would uh, in Moonlight. So that rep that part of the representation of black gay men in um, entertainment wasn't as, um, it was more of sunshine and flowers than, um, than what was more realistically depicted in Moonlight. We as a society should realize that hegemonic masculinity exists and that it affects people. It affects women, it affects men, it affects the LGBT people, it affects the black community, it affects every community, but black men matter because they're human too. Everyone's human. Everyone's a, everyone's a human being. So the fact that there's a double oppression towards black gay men or black men or black non-binary people that are part of the LGBT community they feel I feel like they feel the need to hide themselves from the black community in order to be accepted at all We need to deep to take out the deep roots of masculinity because it's just what that is. It's just masculine. It's just a term. It shouldn't be that we divide ourselves. We should help each other grow. We should help e come together. We need to take out these roots of 
toxic masculinity, these roots of needing to do a cool pose in order to remain a dominant, a dominant male in your society, in your community. Just take them out and confront them head on. Why? The reason, we have to find out the reason why we have such toxic masculinity so present in our society. They don't have that in Korea. (laughs) There's no such thing as toxic masculinity. They have skinship in South Korea between two men, between two women, and they're friends. They don't have to be a couple. They can just be themselves. If they're scared, they can hold on to each other. There's no such thing as, as... really toxic homophobia, really toxic masculinity over there. So why not can it, why can it not be here? Because of our society, because we are a patriarchy. There was no rights for almost anyone except for white men at first. And then it extended to black community that were here and women so the fact that we still have this problem 200 years later is ridiculous that we have this problem of needing to be dominant needing to be masculine in order to even exist in this society. Black men learn to be really toxic because of our society, because of American society. We need to take that out, that masculinity, in order for black men to not be uncomfortable to not have to learn about sexuality at such a young age because that's what's being a man. Sexuality, I mean, in the sense of learning about sex, learning about how it happens, how a child is born. They shouldn't be learning that at such a young age. And on top of that, they shouldn't be learning the fact that homophobia exists at such a young age. They're just kids. Young black men matter. Young black boys matter. Black gay men matter. Young black gay men matter. They do. But we need to be able to learn to change and to learn to take those roots of toxic masculinity out, of hegemonic masculinity out, in order to have peace and not have such hatred against one American to another one person to another it shouldn't matter if if the story from all call to men.org rings true is that we can learn to de-root ourselves from that hegemonic masculinity thought process. This boy, Jalen, from what this article is about, he was accepted by his family. And his father had to swallow the fact that he knew that he learned how to quote-unquote be a man growing up and that that doesn't define what a man should be or what a man could be. He knew, the father of Jalen, knew that being outwardly gay and expressing that could be dangerous to, to his son. But he let him do it because he's proud of his son. He knows that he can't change him. 
he knows that there's such heterosexism, that there's such homophobia in in American society in general, but especially in like the back of the black community. And he knows he can't change his son. He accepts his son. So he supports them. He wants to support his son because he doesn't want to put his son into the man box of calling him, of people calling him punk, people calling him a faggot. Excuse my language, but it's true. He doesn't want to confine him in that box. He doesn't want to be aggressive about it and to putting him into that box. He knows it's not good, that man box. So, he just lets his son be, accepts him. He lets him son, his he lets his son be artistic, be expressive. Because there shouldn't be a man box. There shouldn't be like a set of rules to live by in order to survive in society. Society shouldn't have not done that in the first place, but we do. Society did, did make that happen. And because of that, the black community, especially black males, have this man box. And overall, I believe we should just let it go. Not let go of the idea. Just let go of the fact that we even care about masculinity. Because it's damaging so much of the black community on itself, not even just for black for black gay men, for black men that are in the LGBT community. It's worse. But if you lighten the load of taking away the masculinity, of needing to be a man, because we don't even know what the definition could be. It's different from culture to culture. It's different from one society to another. So why define it this way? There should be no definition of it. The same how there shouldn't be a definition to what a woman is. Thank you all for listening and I hope you all have a great day.